have the basket underneath, um, the porta filter, which is a commercial 58 and, you know, pretty decent weight to it. We have the commercial filter basket and we have the pressurized, both for double shots. Now, as you can see, I put the reservoir back in, which is the first thing you need to put away on um, your... This is for the top of the machine, to cover where you put the water in. And then we're gonna build the basket. So here's the, the bowl. And then this is a splatter guard. So when the coffee hits it, goes into here, it doesn't splatter out. I, I don't really believe it makes a big difference, but here's the rack that goes on top. Make sure the hole, the single hole is in the back left. That's for this, which is where the, the water from, the, from relieving the pressure um, goes through. So speaking of that, so you look underneath the machine and we have to put it down and push up. Not to push hard, just until it stops. And there's a, the three-way solenoid valve. Basically it relieves pressure after you brew, the water will shoot out through there into the basket. So you need to make sure the hole is there so it doesn't make a mess. Here is the porta filter again. A uh, second look at it. Um, here's the it comes with one porta filter, which is all you really need. Here's the commercial basket. It has plenty of holes in the bottom, and that's how you can tell the difference. Now, if you look at the pressurized basket, you see it looks like there's a bunch, but there's only one hole in it, and it is designed for pre-ground coffee. Maybe if you have a grinder that's not really good. Um, that you can fine tune it and it doesn't grind fine enough. And when you're using this, you have to use this pin in the bottom. It'll keep, if you don't use it, then when you brew, it'll just, sh the coffee will shoot out of here and make a huge mess. So those are the ones when you put them in, push nice and hard and it stays in there. So when you knock out your coffee, um, it should come out really well. Okay, so the machine has been warming for at least 20 minutes, so everything is nice and hot and ready to go, which when you heat up the machine, make sure you heat it up with your porta filter in the machine, so the porta filter will be hot too. And then I'll take it out. Now when you take this out, if you have any grains in there from the last shot you did, you need to make sure you wipe it out, make sure it's a nice, clean, dry porta filter. And I put it on my scale, make sure I tear it. I always have it for grams. I do 16 to 18 grams. I'm doing the um, pre-ground Illy today. So I'm gonna weigh that out. Okay, you can see I have 18 grams of coffee in here. So then normally what I do, which this is gonna be tricky with one hand, but I tap it slightly. And then I'm gonna tamp. Normally I do it with two hands, but just trying to show you. And then I tamp until it's firm, flat, and then I tap it. And then I'm gonna tap again, you know. And you want it to be, there's a line in there which you can kind of see. It needs to be below that. If it is above that, then it's the, your coffee's gonna end up touching your, the screen in your machine and it just makes a mess and it'll be way too much coffee and it'll come out and taste nasty. So that's tamped. Now what I do is I run a little bit of water through it. If the, that way you have clean water in it now, water that hasn't been sitting in your machine. I'm gonna put this in here, pull it nice and tight. Get your cup, put your cup under. And ideally it's 20 to 25 seconds, but you know, this is pre-ground, so we'll see. That looks like good. It's starting to turn blonde, meaning it's done. And you can kind of see water dripping out of the tube. And what it, that is doing, is it's relieving pressure from the porta filter. So I'll take the coffee out so you can see the espresso. You can see it with the crema. 
Now, what we're gonna do is I wanna show you, so I'm gonna take this out and you'll see some moisture in it. See, it's a little, but see how it, it's kind of drying out quickly. And that's from that solenoid valve that's in there that's relieving the pressure. So when you hit it out, comes out one easy puck. So if you're gonna do multiple, then you just wipe this clean and you're ready to go. Now we're gonna take a look at the steaming function. So you just push this button down and what that's doing is, is heating the boiler hotter so it can produce steam. You saw this light when is out. When this comes back on, it's hot enough to make steam. This knob releases the steam. There it goes, turn right back on. So when you push the switch, see, there's your steam. So what you want, and this is by the way, a Penarillo wand. It's a basically a auto throfting. Um, it's not very good, but I can show you that later, but it's rough. Okay, so it's done. Couldn't show you the whole thing because I'm doing this with one hand, but you always want to make sure you wipe it clean. Put it over here, put some more steam out. That'll push the extra milk, whatever's inside out, wipe it clean and it's good. And then make sure if you're going to brew your espresso after you froth your milk, make sure you turn off the steam. And now it says it's ready, but it's not. Now the temperature is way high. So if you brew now, it's going to be overheated water and it's going to ruin your espresso. So brew, see all that steam. Once the steam goes away, see the steam is going away. Now turn it off. Now it's ready to brew espresso. And there is the Gaja Classic. This was just a my overall review of my espresso machine, the Gaja Classic. And you can make many different kinds of coffee drinks with this, latte, cappuccino, or just espresso is good. Um, overall, I think this is a great machine, especially for the lower cost. Some of the these machines can get very, very expensive. Um, and this is um, a semi lower cost machine. The only thing I do not like about this machine is the steam wand. Uh, this is a Panarello steam wand. It automatically injects air into the foam, which is causes the foam to be very thick. You get a lot of bubbles. You can get a semi micro foam out of it when you really practice with it, but it really is not a good wand. And uh, in a later video, I will show you how to switch out this wand for a much better wand that will let you make the fine micro foam necessary to make latte art for those people that are really into it. And it's not just latte art. Co getting that micro foam is a better texture when you drink the coffee. It mixes with the espresso better and it gives you an overall sweeter flavor. So um, there's a Gaja Classic, really great entry level machine.